What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here. And when I did the mini ITX build, I mentioned that I used glass tubing. And I asked you guys if you wanted a tutorial about how to use glass tubing in your systems. Now, I admit I'm not the first one to ever do it, but there's very little information out there about how to do it. So today we are going to try and turn this a little bit more mainstream by me showing you the methods that I use to cut the glass and everything you need to know about using glass inside of your system. Now, today's video is sponsored by Scotty Vest, the clothing company known for its innovative designs, allowing you to keep your belongings safe and secure so you can focus on the more important things in life. Now today I'm wearing the Nomadic hoodie. I like it for its bold design, lightweight but warm micro fleece and 13 pockets allow me to keep everything that matters most to me near and dear and I don't have to worry about losing that 980 Ti. You guys know how much I love my 980 Ti's. But maybe this bold design isn't for you. Well that's okay because Scotty Vest has tons of designs, tactical gear, pants, and even women's clothing that's guaranteed to fit your style and needs. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description. It's www.scottyvest.com. That's S-C-O-T-T-E-V-E-S-T.com slash J and start checking out all of the many designs and options that Scotty Vest has to offer. And if you enter coupon code J at checkout, that's J-A-Y, you can save 20% off your order. Now I want to start with a disclaimer. One, uh, working with glass obviously is uh, can be sharp. So you might want to, you know, not cut yourself. Two, there are a lot of methods of cutting glass and the methods that I chose here for this video are going to be amongst the cheapest way to do it because let's face it, a lot of us are looking for the cheapest way to do something and uh, I'm no exception to that rule. And number three, obviously you do this at your own risk. If you uh, mess up your system, well, that's all on you. Now, why would one want to use glass tubing? Well, it really comes down to nothing more than an aesthetic, at least in my opinion. There's not really any sort of a structural integrity to glass compared to PETG or acrylic. Some might think it's really, really brittle. It's actually not. I think acrylic is a bit more brittle than the glass tubing because of the wall thickness. Uh, but for me, I used it because of the clarity. It just looks so damn clear. It's scratch resistant and it's actually going to be more compatible with fluids than any plastic out there. I mean, why do you think they use glass beakers in science labs and dealing with acids and stuff is because glass is pretty much impervious to almost everything. So kind of a case in point, when you're dealing with PETG is there actually is a glycol in here and that's, one of, that's actually what the G stands for in PETG. And you can't use glycol based fluids with this, otherwise you'll start to run into some problems with melting and things. So when it comes to PETG hitting the market, a lot of people freaked out because some coolants do have glycol in them. When it comes to acrylic, I've shown you guys in the past that it's not very shatter resistant. Um, hard impacts can crack it and break it. Granted, I don't think you plan on dropping your computer, but you know, whatever. Um, I think it's just one of those things where people moved from acrylic to PETG because it was new. It's nothing necessarily bad with acrylic either. And acrylic is clearer than PETG when it comes to, you know, how clear the actual plastic is and it looks a lot better. But yeah, all in all, glass is uh, definitely the clearest. It looks the best in my opinion. And like I said, it's not gonna have any adverse reactions to any sort of fluid. Now, as most people know, soft tubing tends to cloud over time. This is some of the soft tubing that was used in my test loop with distilled water. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, it has turned pretty damn cloudy. Now, obviously there are some tools that you are going to need. One of the first ones, more than obvious, is the fact that you're going to need glass tubing. Now, this is available from companies like Mayhem's. In fact, you can get these at like Granger and a lot of industrial supplies as well. But I am holding Mayhem's glass because that's what, uh, what they sent me. But anyway, um, it's gonna be coming in a bunch of different sizes, 12 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and 16 millimeter. One thing to point out, the method I'm showing you today will only work with 12 and 13. I don't tend to use the big stuff like 16 millimeters, so you're going to have to assume you're doing 12 or 13. You're going to need a drill, one that goes up to at least 13 millimeters of opening in here, and we'll talk about why in a minute. You are going to need some files. I just use a straight file, and then I use a rounded file here. Um, a triangle file would work as well, but we've got some files. Truly doesn't matter how coarse they are. And of course, you are going to need some sort of glass cutter or scorer. Now I've got two different models right here that I'm gonna demonstrate. This guy here I got from Amazon for 11 bucks. This guy here I got from Amazon for 35. So you got two different options here, depending on your price point. And uh, I'm actually a little bit more fond of this guy, and I'll show you why when we do the actual cutting, cutting. when we do the actual cutting tutorial. We'll get to cutting later. 
And then of course you are gonna need your rigid fittings for either a 12 or 13 millimeter, you decide. Most people do 13 millimeter, that's kind of the, no the norm. Uh, but yeah, anyway, just regular compression fittings that you would use for hard tubing like PETG or acrylic are the same tubing uh, fittings that you are going to use for glass. Transition. Okay, so one of the things I recommend is that you actually use either acrylic or PETG to get all of your links uh, situated. So I would completely build out the loop with plastic and then use these as your templates for cutting the glass. The reason why is it's a lot easier to make adjustments to plastic by trimming off, you know, eighth of an inch, a quarter inch, whatever, than the glass. Because the thing is with the glass, you need to have something to grab onto for leverage to break it. And you're not gonna be able to do that if you try and score the very end of glass. It just doesn't work very well. So although it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, you know, a few extra bucks to get the plastic, definitely do plastic first, then cut glass. Now cutting the glass is actually very, very simple. It's nothing more than creating a weak spot for the glass to break. You want to control where the glass breaks because we are quite literally going to be breaking glass and that's how we cut it. You know, there are some very expensive uh, lathes and stuff that you can put glass in that has a special cutting wheel that slowly cuts the glass as it's turning on a lathe and it spits, you know, coolant on it, just like a CNC, but it's for glass and it cuts it very nicely. Obviously, these are glass cutting companies that deal with a lot of science beakers and things like that. We are not, you know, we're not scientific around here. This is, this is, this is freaking haggard garage when it comes to tech, man. So that's where this guy comes in right here. You are gonna wanna mark the glass, and the way that I do this is, let's say, let's say this is the length that we need it to be, right there, right? So ignore this part that's hanging off. Let's just use our imagination and say, that's all it is right there. So I take these, I line these up together, and then I take my file, and then I will take the edge of it. This is where kind of a triangular file comes in handy, but this is a nice thin file here. And then I will put a good score in that glass, that way I can see exactly, and you can't really see it on camera, but there's a little scratch right there. That's where I need to cut. So that's how I do it. Uh, but this guy right here, you could try and put this on there, squeeze it by hand, and it is, this is considered a fingertip score. And then you, know, you can try and turn that and get your scratch. The problem is this one here, as you can see, because it's a cheap model, it's got some, uh, let me show you here, it's got some side to side movement. The problem is this wants to walk on you and then you end up getting a spiral scratch, which isn't gonna do you any good. So what I found works for me is I will literally just chuck the glass up in my drill. You wanna put your clamp right here pretty loose that way it doesn't, so that way it doesn't uh, crack the glass. And you see I just made a lathe. I pretty much just made a poor man's lathe. So then what I do is I line the scoring wheel, which is right there, that, sh that little wheel. I line that up where I want the score to be, hold it tight, and just kind of go slow. And then speed up slowly. And then you can see we have put a pretty good score in this glass. Now I like to make sure that the groove is as deep as possible, so I let it go around a bit. And you'll hear it cutting the glass too. There we go, so you can see we've got a pretty deep uh, scratch right there. Now what we've done is we've told the glass pretty much exactly where we want it to crack. Fortunately, when the end right here is broken and then it's filed down and you stick that in the fitting and it's got the clamp that goes over the top, that doesn't actually show. Believe it or not, that little mark is on every tube inside the ITX system, but you can't see it because the clamp uh, on top of the compression fitting actually covers that. So once that's taken care of, you wanna add a little moisture to the cut, I literally just lick my finger and wipe it around. I know that sounds kind of gross, but, and then you're going to apply with your thumbs pressure on either side as you're pulling back like that and away with your hands. And then there it is. There is your nice, uh, pretty even cut. Let me get a close up on that. So that's good enough right there. It's straight and it's not jagged. So you can see right there, without even cleaning it up, it's actually not that jagged and that wouldn't even cut you. It's not that bad at all. Now official glass cleaning would say that you'd wanna use some sort of like a Benson torch and torch the end of this and it's gonna like kind of flame polish it and smooth it out. Obviously I don't have a Benson torch. Uh, so we are going to chuck it back up in my drill and then I just take my file as it's spinning.
And then that is what we are left with right there. Yeah, not too bad for being kind of a poor man's method, huh? Now the reason why you really wanna make sure you clean up that edge is because there are O-rings inside of most of the compression fittings, especially here on the Bits Power 12 millimeter um, compression fittings. These are the ones that I use inside the ITX build. When you push that in, you want to kind of give it a little bit of a twist and then uh, it fits in there perfectly. But if you don't have that smoothed out and you have any sharp edges, you're just gonna slice that O-ring. Now it's not a huge deal if it does cut that O-ring a little bit because it does have another O-ring, at least on the bits power fittings, that goes over it right here. And then when you push down on the clamp, uh, that's gonna compress that O-ring against the glass and the actual fitting so it's not gonna bleed. But there it is, that is what the glass looks like. A little bit dirty at the moment, but yeah, you kinda get the idea. But if that right there isn't a reason to go with glass, I don't know what is. Now the more expensive tool that I showed right here, this is actually designed to, and I'll, I'm gonna put a link to, uh, to Amazon, and of course it's gonna link to my affiliate, so you know if you guys use that, thank you for that, um, to both of these tools. Like I said, I bought both of these off of Amazon. Now each wheel inside of the, or each chain link right here has a scoring wheel inside of it, and the idea is that you uh, open up the jaws like this, and then close, the chain around it. This is actually not easy to do at the angle I'm trying to do this for you guys. So yeah, you lock the chain in like that, and then the idea here is as you squeeze this, it starts to give a score. As you turn it, and you can he actually hear it cracking, or scoring, I should say. And then as you turn it and get a score all the way around it, you're supposed to simply pull the handle in fact, we'll get this in focus. That'd be a good idea, huh? And then when you pull the handle, it just breaks it apart. The problem I have with this is look at how jagged the ends are. So one of the reasons why I bought this tool was to see if it's any better. And now I, I can you know, tell you why I like the other tool better. Now, you can also chuck it up and use it as a scoring tool in the drill like I just did. So let's go ahead and show you how that works. Now this can work in the drill the same way like I showed you with the fingertip score is that you can simply put a little bit of pressure where you need the score to be and then spin it with the drill, take this off, and then you can snap it in the same manner. So that works really well too. And that's one of the reasons why I got this is because this doesn't want to walk on me like this does. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of builds, like I think I'm gonna be doing, a tool like this might come in handy, but the fingertip score is definitely, you know, it's about 11 bucks on Amazon. It's definitely a way to get started. So there you go, guys, the Jay's Two Cents method of scoring and cracking the glass, which is really nothing more than just kind of a standard conventional way of cracking it. So when it comes to the tools, like I said, 11 bucks versus about 35 bucks, you can see the links to these down in the description if you guys are curious about that. Um, if you're only gonna be doing one build, then you could get away with this. You want to give yourself lots of extra glass because every now and then you, you crack it and then it chips off really deep inside the edge of the cut and then you've got to cut that piece all over again. So you want to make sure you have a lot of spare. And like I said, there's no real trimming it down to size because the closer that the score is to the end of the glass, when you go to break it, the more the glass wants to kind of break apart and become jagged. So there's really no simple method when it comes to trimming the glass, at least if, at le without one of those lathes that have a cutting wheel. So that's how I did it. That's how I did the glass in this ITX build, and uh, I'm gonna be doing glass in future builds. I might convert uh, Skunk Works to it. The downside is that you've gotta use 90 degree fittings to do the bends because um, heating and bending glass is not easy, especially to make it keep its shape because filling it with something to make it keep from, or some sort of a mandrel to keep it from crushing on itself, uh, with the amount of heat it takes to get glass to bend means like the silicone tubing we use, the PETG, would melt long before the glass does. Uh, glass is really strong stuff, actually. Anyway, thanks for watching. You guys requested this video and it was actually a pretty easy one to do. If you know a better method for cutting glass or you have any tips for me or anyone else on how to get better, cleaner cuts on the glass without getting too expensive, remember, this, these, are, these are people who don't work with glass every day, including myself, so going super expensive on the tools makes zero sense. So if you've got another poor man's method to cutting glass and keeping it clean, put it in the comments or tweet it at me, and I might do an update to this video showing other methods. Anyway guys, thanks for watching once again. These videos aren't possible without you, and I'm hugely grateful for that. Because of that, I will make another video, and I will see you in it. Till then.